This portion of the show is brought to you by my good friends at HomeCo, Lumber and Hardware in Flagstaff on Butler Avenue. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, folks, welcome back. You know it's been super busy when I haven't had time to get to this interview. The, the Women for Trump bus just came through Flagstaff, and we caught up with Senator Martha McSally. I'm very happy to have back on the program Senator Martha McSally. <laughs> Senator, uh, you're you're driving around uh, northern Arizona and Arizona on the uh, Women for Trump bus. Uh, how's that going? It's going great. You might hear Boomer lapping up water in the background here. Uh, <laughs> That's so, okay. Boomer's your dog. Well, Boomer's your dog, you know, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah, sorry, just to be clear. <laughs> My golden retriever, yeah. Yeah, there you so go. So he was he's on the bus this morning with uh, Mercedes Schlapp, and uh, we've got Kelly Ward. It's a great little group. Uh, so we're making multiple stops uh, today just to, you know, rally the troops and also talk about – Look, I've been fighting stereotypes my whole life, so I don't like talk, saying all women care about this and all men care about that. Uh, but, you know, there are some things that are very important that, uh, you know, women are focused on right now, which is job opportunities and getting the economy going again and making sure that our communities are safe. And that's why it's so important that President Trump uh, win Arizona and win reelection and why I win this seat, because the Senate majority is at stake uh, through Arizona. So that that's a, a really key a key element here. And so it's great. So far, so good. We're excited to be around the state with Mercedes and uh, rallying women for President Trump. Yeah. And Senator, I think you hit on something key there that I discussed with uh, with Eric Trump just the other day on the program, which is safety. And people yeah. are kind of freaked out. I mean, I, I, you know, before we started the interview, I, I told you, hey, just don't look at the news because I see people just coming to blows literally in this country. Mm-hmm. And it is a scary time. And then you see these predictions that, oh, Trump might, you know, these pollsters, they, who, who, what do they know? Right. But, oh, yeah. Trump might win it uh, on election night, but then the, the mail in ballots might come in a week early and we're all mm-hmm. scratching. Our, it's a nerve wracking time. I guess is what it I'm is. trying to say. This is it has been a there's this has been a very difficult year so far, and there's a lot at stake. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of unrest. Yeah. Um. And in just you know a little over sixty days, we'll have the most consequential election in our lifetime, deciding whether we continue to be a country a country of freedom and opportunity, uh, with strong national security and border security and public safety and law and order, or whether we allow the radical left to get power. Uh, which would be disastrous for our country and disastrous for this state. Mm-hmm. And that's in everything from, you know, raising taxes and socialism and the government takeover of health care to, you know, open borders and the Green Bad Deal and uh, abolish ICE and defund the police and taking away our Second Amendment rights. So people need to realize that we are ground zero here in Arizona for this tipping point election, and we're not helpless. So that's the good news. We can do something about it by voting, by talking to others to ensure President Trump wins re-election and that I hold on to this seat because this is not about an astronaut or a fighter pilot. It's about freedom or socialism. It's about security or anarchy. And that's what this vote is for. My my opponent's a Trojan horse, uh, will vote for Chuck Schumer, and uh, that radical left agenda would be forced on Arizonans. And it's it's dangerous. And so we just need, in the midst of the uncertainty, people to be clear about their choice going forward and what kind of America they want to live in. Senator, I, I got a couple follow-ups on that, and my mind starts working here. Now, First of all, and it might have been, it might have been, uh, Eric Trump on the program the other day said, this ain't, this ain't your, you know, Kennedy, uh, John F. Yeah. Kennedy party, the Democrats anymore. It's not even and, Clinton's Democrat well, party. No, no, it's not even 10 yeah. years ago. Let, let me, right. let me or, paint a picture. Or Obama's, quite frankly. Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Let me paint yeah. a picture though, because I mean, I have family members and friends, as I'm sure you do, that are, that are Democrats, but yep. they, they really consider themselves like the traditional Kennedy type Democrats. And yeah. when, you, when you tell them about some of these radical, policies they're like that's not the party that's not the party and i'm always arguing that that is the party but you're not recognizing that and you're still in this party yeah i think you know their party left them and uh, i meet people like this all the time um and they certainly are not for what the you know bernie sanders aoc uh, elizabeth warren kamala harris joe biden um, uh chuck schumer mark kelly 
uh, you know, cabal. So yeah. uh, people need to wake up and understand this is this is not even I mean, Obama's policies look like make, make them conservative compared to what these guys are talking about right now. I know, right? And look, don't don't believe me. Bernie Sanders said it himself at their convention that what used to be extreme, his ideas used to be extreme. They're now considered mainstream in his party. I think that was a paraphrase of his words. So they just need to make a choice. Look, they, you know, it's, this is not about whether you like tweets or demeanor. This is about what kind of America you want to live in. No, I agree. And when you say, hey, this is the most pivotal, pivotal election in our lifetime, that's cliche. And we, we seem to say that every two years, but I, I agree with you. I think this yeah. is because we're at a, at a crossroads. When you're out there and, and you're riding around in the, uh, the, the, the bus. And by the way, I was on one of the Trump buses here with, uh, with Jeff DeWitt and, and Congressman Biggs, uh, I don't know, a week ago. I can't even remember time anymore. Just, it's, it's yeah. slipping by. It's pretty, pretty plush, by the way. It's a nice ride. But anyway, <laughs> uh, when you, <laughs> you, you have to mention that, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, Boomer, it, Boomer likes it. There, there you go. <laughs> No. But no, when you're meeting folks, especially when you get into more of the rural communities or really any community in Arizona, are you seeing what, what are they saying? What are what are folks saying? The, the, the down to earth folks out there? Yep, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy because they understand uh, what's at stake here. And and they want to make sure that America's foundations and our values and freedoms and our institutions are preserved here. And they know that it's at stake in Arizona. They want to make sure that their constitutional rights are protected, including our Second Amendment rights and our First Amendment rights. And all I mean, all of them. Right. Because it, it, there's the, the mobs and the anarchists and the cancel culture are what's taken over here. And I think uh, regular hardworking Arizonans, uh, it, you know, rural areas, uh, the patriot, freedom loving people. They care about that hard work and making a better life for themselves and handing the country to their kids better than we got it. And that's what's at stake. And they know that. And that's why they're ready to fight to preserve it. And, and Senator, this race is tightening. People need to realize that this 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 will be a close race. Is it truly the deciding? You think this is the deciding race yeah. for, the, for the Senate makeup? Make I mean, President Trump could yes. win. I, I think he, he can win this election. I'm not sure about the House. But is, is yep. yours the deciding factor on the Senate side? It, it really is. It, it absolutely is. Look, we're on defense uh, as Republicans in the Senate. We've got a lot of seats we're defending. But Chuck Schumer cannot have a path to power unless it goes through Arizona. So we are the pivotal race. We are dead heat. Just to be clear, this has always been a battleground race. We've yeah. always been dead heat, uh, despite the millions of dollars of uh, you know money poured in by Chuck Schumer and his allies because they – my opponent, Chuck Schumer, is top recruit, and they've poured millions in. But despite that, uh, we're dead heat, and we are sh- structurally in our favor. Arizonans love freedom. You know, Arizonans want border security. So that's why my opponent's hiding. That's why he doesn't want to debate me. That's why he doesn't use Democrat anywhere in his, you know, ads, because he doesn't want people to know that he's a Trojan horse to vote for Schumer. Those and are some what sleek, that will mean for them. Mar- Martha, those are some sleek ads. I mean, I see him, and it, he, he's, he's portraying as, and he's welcome to come on the program, but he's portraying as the regular guy. You know, I'm in my T-shirt fixing my, my motorcycle type thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they say nothing. They say well, nothing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, look, my vo- my voting record is on display for everybody to see what I fight, fought for. You know, I got the most bills signed into law for Arizona in my first year in the Senate, delivering for Arizonans. In contributing with our tax cuts and deregulation to the strong economy, securing our border, rebuilding our military, confirming conservative judges. My record is out there. Uh, he has no record. And so he's basically saying nothing because he knows that it's out of step with Arizona. So don't be fooled, Arizonans. Yeah. This isn't about slick ads. This is about your future. Yeah, and, and and I will say this, and I've said this a lot of times on my show, Senator. You're a hard worker. You're always out there, just Thank you. grinding away. So so keep at it. All right, let's do this. Um, you're scheduled to come on the program next week again. So I want to get okay. some deeper into some issues, and, yeah, and, great. and we'll we'll take the time then. Uh, Senator McSally on the Women for Trump bus with. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's the dog's name again? Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> The with, rescue golden retriever. There you go. With Boomer. So say hi to Boomer and, and Senator I Martha McSally, folks. All right. We'll talk with you soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.